Hey guys, welcome into the Pug Reborn channel. We're back with the next perk in the perk guide, Pathfinder. I'm going to be giving you my deep detail analysis of this perk followed by going into the Puggle Roundtable, which community members come together to talk about this perk in full and also give a rating scale from 1 to 5, 1 being fantastic, 5 being terrible. However, if you want to understand the scale a little better, it is in the description section below. Before I dive into this one, I want to thank everybody who's given me feedback on these perk guides. Going forward into the Tier 2 perks, I'm going to be splitting up the perk guide from the Puggle Roundtable so that way people can go to each one to get a full experience of what the perk has to offer and the actual opinions of myself as well as the community. So hit that like, subscribe for more content, and join the Discord where everything's going crazy and you have a chance to be a part of the round table. Without further ado, let's get into Pathfinder. To fully understand this perk, we have to look at the description to start. So what it says is, learn to move on difficult terrain. Action point cost for movement on all terrain is reduced by one to a minimum of two AP per tile. And fatigue cost is reduced to half. Changing height levels has no additional AP cost anymore, but fatigue cost is unaffected. Basically, there's three things you need to know about this perk. Number one, you can never go below two AP. If it's a three AP tile movement, it brings it to a two AP. And if it's a four AP tile movement, it brings you to a three. Number two, every movement you make is cut in half in terms of fatigue. So if you move to a tile and it says 14, you're only costing seven fatigue to move to that tile. And number three, when you're changing elevation, usually there's a plus one to your AP, making it a three but now that is completely eliminated, so it's only a two AP to go up or to go down. Okay, so breaking it down is pretty easy, but let's get into the deep dive and understand really what's going on with this perk. As we go face first into this one, I wanna give a shout out to Turtle225. This guy is incredible, he's done a lot for the community. Check his stuff out in the description section below. But the first thing we need to dive into is the actual mechanics of movement across all terrain types. So this is what we know. There's 11 terrain types, six terrain tiers, and a pretty hefty fatigue penalty throughout. While this may be daunting, there are two things I want you to look at when looking at these terrain types. Starting out, the most common terrain types you're gonna be fighting on are gonna be from tier one to tier three. Ultimately, two thirds of your gameplay are gonna be battlegrounds on these tiers. However, on the flip side, you do have tier four through six, probably benefiting the most through Pathfinder at only a third of your combat time. So let's separate the two classes and focus solely on the most common terrain type, tier one through three. Dry steeps and roads come in at two fatigue per tile. Grass steep tundra comes in at four fatigue per tile. And finally, deserts come in at six fatigue per tile. Quick disclaimer, I'm only gonna be using six tiles worth of combat to explain the fatigue that you're actually saving because in most fights, you're either doing two up to 10 tiles to fight your enemy. This is not including fleeing, which we'll talk about later. So for average movement is six total tiles in combat, that would mean that dry steeps goes from 12 fatigue down to six fatigue. Grass steep tundra, which is your most basic terrains that you're on most of the time, goes from 24 fatigue down to 12 fatigue. And finally, deserts go from 36 fatigue down to 18 total fatigue. Irregardless, Pathfinder or not, AP is always gonna be at two per tile movement within the first three tiers. Now class two, less battle time, however, greater gains from Pathfinder. Again, assuming six total tiles of movement per battle, forest, snow, muddy earth, all come in at a grand total of 18 action points and 36 fatigue. With Pathfinder, however, you're dropping to 12 action points and a grand total of 18 fatigue. Shallow water, otherwise known as Oasis, is ultimately going up to 24 action points and 72 fatigue. However, when you're using Pathfinder, it drops all the way down to 18 action points and 30. 36 fatigue total. Murky water, otherwise known as swamps, is set at 24 action points, 84 fatigue. However, Pathfinder drops it down to 18 action points and 42 fatigue buildup. As you can see with class two, you're gaining a lot of fatigue back and you're gaining an extra action point uh, when you get to shallow waters and murky waters, which can be very helpful in the long run. Now let's look at terrain elevation. Anytime you elevate terrain, it's always gonna increase your AP cost by one and a fatigue cost by four. However, Pathfinder eliminates the extra action point cost, but does not reduce the extra fatigue cost. 
For example, if I'm in the forest and I go up one elevation without Pathfinder, I go from 3 AP up to 4 AP, 6 fatigue up to 10 fatigue. However, with Pathfinder, I don't have any change with my action points, but I do get a plus four attack down to the three, which makes it seven. Something worth mentioning when it comes to elevation is that there's only one terrain that doesn't have any elevation at all. That would be swamps. Now let's look at the two traits that are heavily affected by Pathfinder. I gotta give the nod to Athletic because Athletic takes out two fatigue penalty per tile moved. What that means is that if you have Pathfinder paired with this, dry steeps, roads, grass, steep, and tundra all give you no fatigue buildup per tile move. Desert, forest, snow, and muddy earth go from three fatigue down to one fatigue per tile move. That's quite impressive when you put it all together through a whole combat scenario. Clubfoot is really interesting because it's a trait that gives you plus two fatigue per tile move. Now to accurately use this, you have to look at grass, steep, and tundra. It's a plus four without Pathfinder. When you add club foot, it brings it from four up to six. Now Pathfinder cuts that in half, and so you're going from plus two fatigue up to plus three. If you're not adding the two onto the original cost, it's only four, which means that with Pathfinder, you're getting a plus one fatigue back. As you get into forest, snow, muddy earth, oasis, and swamp, that's when you really start seeing the returns back. Believe it or not, there are two kryptonites to Pathfinder, starting with injuries. Basic injuries actually cause AP points to be taken away per tile of movement. For instance, you have the broken leg, burnt leg, cut Achilles tendon, injured kneecap, and finally sprained ankle. All these different injuries count against you after Pathfinder's already applied. Arguably the worst is gonna be permanent injury maimed foot, and ultimately you lose one action point per tile moved, and that is again applied after Pathfinder's already been applied to your movements. So with the Kryptonites out of the way, let's look at the legendary locations and see how it's most helpful. The first knot I'm gonna to give to is the Goblin City. Starting out, you have to go up elevation in order to get to the Goblins. You have arrows coming in at you with poison, which goes for three turns and it negates one action point per turn of those three. It's a big deal when it comes to this because being able to run in on them as fast as possible to cause some serious uh, conflict, at least throughout their morale, is so incredibly pivotal in this fight. When facing the sunken library, it's very important as well because you're running across the desert tiles, which is six fatigue. If you can cut that in half to three, it's very important. You'd be surprised how much movement actually is going on, going after the flactories, going after uh, any of the, the key targets in this one. Very important when picking this perk. Finally, Pathfinder finds its best spot when it goes against the Kraken. Because you're in the swamp, taking up 14 fatigue per movement of tile, if a tentacle pulls you into the head, you need to have at least 14 fatigue to walk away from the head within that turn. Otherwise, the Kraken head will chomp down on you. It's very important. You need to be on point. And with all the fatigue drop that happens, whether attacking the head or attacking the tentacles, it can be very, very devastating to your group. Now let's look at the synergies between Pathfinder and some of the strategies out there. Tanks can benefit very heavily from Pathfinder. Being able to get in position first, to be able to hold choke points and go up a hill or down a hill to be able to get in position, it's very key and can definitely benefit tanks of all kinds. For all of you aggressive players out there, if you all have Pathfinder, you can run up in the first turn and the very next turn take a step or two steps or maybe the enemy comes and engages you, but you have the opportunity to be as aggressive as possible with very little fatigue drop. Piggybacking on the idea of being aggressive, if you add adrenaline with Pathfinder, you can run up four tiles, use adrenaline, then the very next turn jump in to cause those massive morale checks. Pole arms are very benefited by this because of going up a terrain, down a terrain, or having the mastery which allows you to go two spaces, two tiles, and then strike. Not having the penalties of AP on harder terrain can make more accessibility with pole arm users. Two handers benefit pretty heavily because of two different reasons. Number one, you have the fatigue drop off, being able to use more AOEs. For instance, if you're pretty much 50% through your fatigue and you have to go up a terrain, on top of that, you don't have mastery and it could be a rough terrain like a forest you want the high advantage you want as much fatigue as possible to benefit your endeavor when taking these steps the other thing too is that mastery is only further help your situation in terms of having as much fatigue as possible 
Whether for safety or height advantage, range units benefit heavily from Pathfinder, being able to get out of action quicker or get in better position to absolutely devastate your opponent. Handguns and crossbows are really unique because it only takes 3 AP to take a shot, which means that you can take at least 3 tiles worth of movement at 2 AP compared to your other ranged weapons like throwing axes and bows where you can only move 2 tiles and shoot. Now let's look at three perks that work really well with Pathfinder. The first perk is going to be Adrenaline. Ultimately, for 1 AP and 20 Fatigue, the very next round you start at the very beginning of the round to be able to attack the enemy. What this means is with Pathfinder you can run 4 tiles, then use Adrenaline, allowing you for the next turn to bear down on the enemy, for instance like Goblins, Barbarians, or any opponent really, causing morale checks from the get. It's very effective and you're still saving Fatigue through that process of Pathfinder. The second perk I gotta give a nod to is Brawny. Ultimately, the fatigue and initiative penalty from wearing armor and helmet is reduced by 30%. More fatigue means more whacking around people, using AOEs, using disarm, using special abilities that can pretty much demoralize the enemy. The final perk I wanna give a nod to is Indomitable. Indomitable ultimately is a five AP buildup with a cost of 25 fatigue. It grants a 50% reduction to damage, including an immunity to stun knockback being grabbed for one turn. This is incredibly important because while you are saving so much fatigue, that extra fatigue can be brought upon being able to hold an enemy in place, being able to save a brother or put a brother in a better, for instance, like a lone wolf build. Definitely worth a nod. Of course, there's other perks that work really great with this. I could have thrown recovery in there as well, giving you more fatigue after moving across the land and swampy waters or whatever the case may be. The point still being that you have to make the decision for yourself. Is this perk worth it? Will I put this on my back line, my front line, or everybody all together? Or maybe just those specialized builds. If you do like this perk guide thus far, please hit the like, subscribe, join the Discord, be a part of the community. We have an active community constantly talking about Battle Brothers. If you're a new player or an expert we love to talk to you about what your thoughts are or even be a part of the round table which is coming up right now without further ado let's dive into the pucker round table all right guys so now we're going to get into the round table of course so that you guys are aware of this we're going to give each every, each one of these guys a chance to speak on the perk itself and give it a number of rating from one to five one being i use this perk all the time five being i just don't use this perk i'm not a fan of this perk and then at the very end we'll have an open discussion today we're going to be starting again with mr baba ganoush what do you think about pathfinder so personally i don't use pathfinder that much but it the times I have used it, it has definitely uh, come in good use, but it's pretty situational for me because uh, it's really good in swamps, so you can like chase people down or uh, get to like VIP, you want to kill or whatever. And uh, I, I really like it on archers because uh, if I need, need them, if I want them to go to like a high ground to get a better shot, it don't uh, lo lose. Uh, it's an extra shot, you know, uh, so so you get more damage from from your archers, but you're not always gonna have high ground for them in the early game. That is, like in the early part of the battle. Uh, other than that, like I don't, I, I don't really know uh, what other uses. It, uh, no, actually, it, it does help with fatigue a lot. So if you have like a like a pretty bad fatigue brother, but you don't want them to be like a zero zero stem bro, you could put this on him, so he doesn't get affected as much. It, like if he's one of those guys who moves around a lot. But uh, other than that, I don't I don't know what it looks like you could use it for. Okay, what was your grade? Oh yeah, grade uh, four. Fair enough. Anybody got any questions for him or any comments? Okay. All right. Well, then we're gonna move on to carve a hole. What do you think about Pathfinder? For Pathfinder, I'm gonna give it a two. Pathfinder isn't for every build, but what I found is it's often an integral part of the builds that I put it on. I've toyed with the idea of giving a whole team Pathfinder. But I don't think there is the, the room to put that in a lot of perks. The opportunity cost is too high and you can't really fit it in. For So like for a two-handed bro, you can move one and attack. So the stamp with mastery, the stamp portion of that doesn't really come into effect that much. Unless you're like really, if you're at max stam and you're moving in a forest, you won't be able to move and attack. But then you, you're going to have to recover. So then I'll just recover. Then I'll be able to do that next turn anyway. So with Pathfinder, you could do that. So that's a one point. But the AP portion of Pathfinder um, doesn't come in there. The AP portion of Pathfinder for a two-handed bro is either in a swamp or when you're moving up a forest hill or a snow hill 
and that is so rare that is not if that's what you're taking it for is that ap point you're like that's not worth it it's just not happening enough so for uh throws with four ap attacks you, you um you still only get your two attacks when you don't move so the extra ap of moving um like in a forest doesn't help you at all like i guess you could move well that's that's false you can move two but and um on flat ground, it doesn't help you. Like, it, like the stand portion isn't really that much. But, so, it's very situational for the front line, is what I'm really trying to get at here. What I use it most on is I use it on my, my hybrids. I use it on Polearm Mastery Bros. Because what Polearm Mastery does is it gives you 5 AP per Polearm Swing. Now, so what you can do is, who do you give Polearms to? You give Polearms to guys who have really good melee skill and probably not very good melee attack that's why they're in the back line because you can't afford to give them really good mail or melee defense that's what i meant to say they don't have good melee defense so when they don't have good melee defense they need to not get hit and so what the, what the whole arm mastery does is allow you to move two tiles uh on two eight on two ap per tile and attack which means you can move forward one attack an orc warrior from behind your front line and move back and this means the orc warrior will not be able to push through your front line. Because orc warriors are only pushed through when there's an, a, a brother adjacent to the front line the guy that they're onto. So when the you move forward, attack, and move backward, there's that one gap between your hybrid bro and your front line bro. So the orc warrior will not push through. Same thing with unholds. They won't throw your bro when there's um, no adjacent dude behind that bro. So you don't need Pathfinder when you're on grass or when you're on sand or when you're on like road but when you're on forest and when you're on snow something and also for for chosens or for those unholds or even just for orcs you can find them up there then you're able to do that on that three ap terrain which is huge it means you don't have to sacrifice um a lot of the tactics you use in these giant the orc fights and the chosen fights are the hardest fights in the game basically and you're not having to sacrifice your tactics or put your bros in more danger because uh, because of Pathfinder, which is so and so like important. Because you have to be like if those are the fights, so uh, being able to use Pathfinder there is great. I also have um, I use these crossbow polearm hybrids to take out necromancers. I will not use the name in this video, but the necro killer he will. What he does is with his crossbow could be a bow, it doesn't matter. He the necromancer likes to hide behind zombies. And so the zombies will guard the front of the necromancer. So you imagine your bros on the left, the zombies in the middle. They're like in the middle between you and the necromancer. But they don't go to the top and the bottom. They just guard the front. What you do is you take one of these uh ranged hybrids and you throw them around the top of the map or the bottom of the map, depending on where the necromancer is like closer to. And then you get behind the zombie, and then you shoot the necromancer. So this means you don't have to bring an archer, because I don't think archers are very good. And then um, you don't have to just like, take pot shots over the, the zombies, or the fallen heroes. That doesn't tend to work very frequently. And then, so again, this doesn't really matter much on, um, on like, grass terrain, because you just move four anyway. But on forest terrain or snow terrain where you do find a lot or even swamp terrain you find a lot of the the zombie maps on that type of terrain and being able to move four means that you can get around that necromancer so quickly before the like before the zombies really even get to you sometimes if you're able to if it's a small enough map and what it also means is you can outrun zombies because you know this hybrid this is a single hybrid he's on the other side of the map once he kills the necromancer the zombies are actually and start coming after him that's just like because they have no more necromancer to protect he outruns them all so the guy with like you know he has 20 melee defense or whatever it is or 25 which isn't very good so he won't survive when there's four zombies on him but with pathfinder he just gets away so this build alone has its pathfinder is integral to it like i would not want this build without pathfinder other builds i wouldn't really want them with pathfinder it like it doesn't make sense for ap like it's very situational where you would want the ap the stam is certainly nice, but there's other things. Like, I'm not giving up Berserk. Or I'm not giving up Killing Frenzy so that I can move with, like, 3 AP on a Forest Tile as opposed to 6 AP. Or 3 Stam on a Forest Tile as opposed to 6 Stam. It's just not worth it. So, it's really good on Bros 
that um, have the pole arms. It's really good on bros that maybe have high initiative. So then you can keep their stam up, you can keep their dodge up. But on a lot of dudes, it's not great. All right, so with that being said then, anybody have any questions for him or any thoughts or anything? Well, then we're going to move on to the next one. Forant, what do you think about Pathfinder? What's your grade? Uh, I would give Pathfinder a 2. It's super good on hybrids, but not really good on anything else. Because uh, it's super situational. But for Pathfinder on hybrids, I really love it going through swamps, running around using that pole arm to <laughs> hit them and then be able to run away really far. And it's also super good, of course, in the Kraken fight where you have to be in the swamp. Because, you know, being in the swamp is super annoying in the Kraken fight, having to go for each tentacle and all that. Um, but for other builds, I wouldn't really say it's that good for because it it's super situational for the stam or the the AP to be two. So yeah, I would give it just the two, in my opinion. Okay, fair enough. Any questions? Any thoughts? Anybody? Well, then we're gonna move on. Wait, wait. Oh, you go said ahead. you said just a two. Isn't that like pretty good? Not just that. I I mean, uh, I just have that. I just say it that way. Okay. I don't know why. It's good. Just I don't know why I just say just A2. <laughs> well, so pretty much what you're saying is for the people you use it for, it's an A+. Plus, but for the most part, you just don't... Yeah. You, there's no reason to put it on other people. Yeah. But you find the high value of the perk for the situation. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. I would like to say that is a good way to summarize what I said as well. Because I think what happens is there's so much... There's... When we when we dive into some of these perks, you know, like, there's so many critical points, but for what it's good for, it is great for it. Right, so. All right, so then we're going to move on here to Yager Plays. What do you think about Pathfinder? I'm going to be giving it a four for kind of the same reason that what they're saying, but I just don't find it as useful as what Carvajal and Forent has uh, said. I used it all the time. It was basically something, the, the, first, the first perk that I would put on any brother when I first started playing, and I found it useful because when I was fighting, you know, in those situational places off off of the planes, they were it was useful. It was perfect. However, after putting some hours into the game, I just found that I didn't really need it. I could just kind of force my way through. Uh, most of the time I had enough archers that they would charge me, so moving wasn't really that necessary for me for the way that I have played. But now I pretty much don't use it at all. I've I've thought that it was useful for the maimed foot. I think is one of the permanent injuries, but it turns out that it doesn't it doesn't help that. It just it's just used for the terrain that you're on. So a maimed foot in the swamp actually I think costs five movement, which basically you're just moving one hex per turn. So it would help in that situation, but but it didn't really help in the way that I thought with maimed foot. Yeah, I I mean I. I think I used it a couple times more recently for Polar Mastery so that in a forest they could move in, hit, and then move away, uh, as Carvajo was suggesting. But um, no, I, I typically stay away from it and just uh, force my way across battle if I need to. So anybody anybody else have a anything they want to add to that or any question? Well then, we'll move on to the next one, the final one here. Pugo Redemption, what do you think about Pathfinder? I am very much along the lines of Yager plays. Uh, I'm giving it a four, and it's uh, like him. Early on when I started playing the game, I messed with some runs where I ran Pathfinder, and after playing a ton, I kind of found that it was a quality of life perk rather than anything else. Uh, what I will say is I do actually use Pathfinder. It's usually about the last perk I throw on my characters. And that's mainly because of when it comes to end game fights, when you're having to fight through large hordes of goblins on hills in the goblin fortress, or you're in the swamp fighting the Kraken, having the Pathfinder perk really makes those kind of terrain very manageable like it's a huge difference that's one of the things i think we all kind of agree on is if you get in a swamp pathfinder is like one of the best perks there are in the game or at least in this first row but otherwise like the vast majority of the game you're not actually making use of pathfinder to the point where it'd be necessary to have on your brother and so that's where it's kind of like i give it a four because really most of the yeah the vast majority of the game i won't even use it on a brother it's just kind of like the throwaway perk at the end 
to allow like an easier transition to late game battles. Uh, I didn't find a much issue when it comes to polearm users. I don't think it's that necessary. Once again, it's kind of like the idea that for the vast majority of the game, being able to back up and then jump back in in certain situations, I didn't find that be all that necessary for all the way up till the final perk option or like the final level of my characters. And so, yeah, I think that kind of concludes is it's a four because I do use it, but it isn't because it's very vital to any of my characters. It's just when it comes to the late game or at the end, I like that quality of life, being able to travel on any terrain and it opens up like swamp gameplay and such. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of, uh, definitely a lot of agreements there. Uh, does anybody have any questions or anything? I have a comment. I would say as much as this probably sounds hypocritical, but um, taking it last is something I did not mention, but I do take it last on my uh, the builds. I just said it's integral to. Is that, you're right. It is a quality of life thing, but sometimes I think that quality of life can be so great that it's almost um, you can't go back. Yeah, and that's kind of like what I said with like swamp battles or mm -hmm. like when you're talking about like the goblin what is it I got fortress or so like those battles things like pathfinder all of a sudden like the value of it goes from being quality of life to almost necessary yep. and so yeah it's like i don't want to say like i'd never use it because again i always try and throw it on in every character towards the end and it just really opens up that extra bit of gameplay whether it's in swamps or those fortresses where you really need that extra fatigue from trying to move and especially up different level anybody else well i think there's a lot to unpack here for the analysis of pathfinder i know for a fact the community is split half the community is going to say pathfinder is a one the other half are going to say you know the opposite spectrum where it's like that four where it works great when you when in certain situations but ultimately uh, i can live without it and it is a quality of life I, i'll say this i'm going to go with a solid three because i'm really in the middle a lot of times when i start up like i think everybody has had a moment where they go to start a group of brothers and say i'm going to have everybody with Pathfinder and it's tough because when you have a split of people half the half your brothers have Pathfinder the other half don't and you're running from a battle or you're trying to move along the terrain there's some, this unevenness uh, one thing I find with like pole arms they're incredible I want to so I'll, I'll say that right now it's incredible but when you're in a rough terrain and your brothers can only go so far before they're they're starting to the huff and puff you know especially in the swamp or uh, snowy forest uh, muddy earth whatever all those different terrains it's it can be it can be almost like penalizing to the guys who actually have it and so there's definitely that legendary locations i'll knock that out right away as well um it's incredible against the goblin city it's incredible against the kraken in fact i think it's the most essential perk bar none against the kraken in the game it's it's absolutely absurd how much it, you can save a brother's life uh, we talk about pat or footwork we talk about a rotation but this is the true saving perk in that fight so if you are taking that on to understand Understand who has and who doesn't is so vital uh, in that in that circumstance now going on into the terrain side of it what we do know is that it cuts the fatigue in half so the AP you actually get a drop in AP when you get into forest and forest snow including some terrains with desert the desert actually falls under the fatigue category of four so every step in the terrain of the desert it's for fatigue per step when you get into the forest, it's six. And when you get into murky water, otherwise swamp, it's a 14 fatigue drop. Now when, with Pathfinder, it drops to seven with the, with the swamp. With the forest, it drops three. With Tundra, it drops two. Dry, steep, and road, it's only one. Why I'm bringing this up is because that fatigue is incredible that you're saving. It really is. To cut the fatigue that much in half is incredible. So like guys with athletic, if I have a, an, an athletic brother, I almost, there's no way for me not to pick this because all the way through the forest and snow, I'm only using one fatigue on forest battles, snow battles, and on muddy earth. Uh, and so that is incredible. Grass, steeps, tundra is zero fatigue buildup. Uh, and of course, dry, steeps, and road is zero fatigue buildup. So those type of things. And going through the swamp is only five fatigue per step. That makes an incredible boost. So there's so many situations were Pathfinders incredible. I just struggle with the idea that, and why it's a free ultimate, three ultimately, is because while I'm saving fatigue, while I'm able to run across the map, how often am I purposely taking battles in the forest? How many times have you gone to a location where it's like, 
this thing is in the trees. You almost don't want to do it because you know the, the consequences. But there's also scenarios where you have to take on like webnecks. You get caught in the trees and for some reason you're always getting ambushed even if you're attacking them. And man, Pathfinder could save your archer that's sitting out in the in the open. Or could save another brother who's just stuck in a terrible scenario. So it's like, I, I, I constantly yo-yo this idea of what's what's viable, what's not, what works, what doesn't. Uh, you know, you look at like crossbows, crossbows only need two AP to be able to shoot the bow or to shoot the arrow. So to be able to move across the map or move up a really high terrain and til still take a shot is so viable. I mean, you got two-handers. Two-handers is a great example of where they get fatigued out or they need to they need to have as much fatigue as they can as they're moving across the land to attack something. Or the biggest one, the, the one that's the build that's starting to take wave is the no stand build. You're at like 25 fatigue or you're at 35 fatigue and all this armor and just the one shot deal, you need this perk for it because you, you can't take steps with a no stand build. It's it's a must perk for that type of build. So if you are doing that, you're, you're gonna need it. There's So again, this is a, an absolute yo-yo uh, perk for me. Some guys will do it, some guys won't. Some guys swear that it needs to be on everybody. I just, I can't find a middle ground where there's there's too many goods and bads and things I, uh, you know, quality of life things that we talked about that kind of get in the way. Yeah, yeah, it's just, uh, it's tough. It's all what you value. This is a perk that I don't think anybody can truly give a final stamp on uh, because there's a live and die community by this one. And I just I just fit in the middle. Just depends. It depends on the situation, depends on the, the fights, my aspirations through my gameplays, and so on. If I want to use it as a tactical advantage to take people on in the forest, I'm going to use that perk. And I'm going to love throwing people in there because they're going to be fatigued. But you got to understand also there's a lot of things that you fight in the forest that have the Pathfinder or a higher AP count. So, you know, where does that actually value? So that's my thoughts on it. Again, it's a three. Anybody have any questions, comments? Okay. Yeah, the, uh, Go ahead. Yep. I was going to say, the ability for crossbows to move, shoot, and reload on any terrain barring swamp is huge. Mm -hmm. Like, up, like, especially up hills, too. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what I would find annoying, is, you, like, you, you spawn on, on your map, and then, um, your crossbow guy's on like, like there's like a one tile hill for some reason, and then he, he shoots and reloads his crossbow, and then he's stuck there. And you're right. like, well, I want to move, but I happen to spawn it. Like, it's not your fault you're on the hill, you know what I mean? Like, right. So it's really great to um, not have to deal with crap like that. Oh, 100%. And that's why, I, that's why I give it credit for that. Any kind of archery thing where you can instantly take the high ground and, and take a shot. And, and again, like the crossbow, you can actually move quite a ways before you're able to shoot. 2 AP is such a small percentage to fire a crossbow. It's, I believe it's 3 AP. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking... Yeah, it's oh. right here. Oh, my bad. A, yeah, it's, yeah, it says 2. But yeah, I feel like so, I should know that. Yeah, I mean, it's... But, you know, there, there again, it's just something where it's... There's so many interesting little scenarios that work. Uh, anybody else? I mean, is there is there an opportunity to do an all an all Pathfinder movement and a, like a an all Pathfinder origin type of thing and still be ul ultimately affected, can, or effective? Does anybody feel like that is a real possibility? Maybe if you only play in the desert. I think that that's where it could be, be effective. Like... Everybody, everybody has Pathfinder, but uh, I don't think that would work any other, like, you could have that, have, have, have Pathfinder on everyone if you don't do that. I think, I guess, I can't fully speak for everyone, but I'm pretty sure most of us agree that Pathfinder isn't a bad perk, per se. It's just, like, you can make it work in a start or any kind of run. However, there's other perks in that first tier that we would rather choose we're going to have more use out of them than Pathfinder, like the majority of time playing. And so it's not that starting with all Pathfinder run is bad. There's just more optimal ways to start. We, I think we each have our own separate ideas on what that optimal path is, but I think we all can kind of attest to like Pathfinder isn't one of the options. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to, yeah, when I say that I'm not trying to advocate too far, but just enough to say, because there are, there's going to be people that are, that swear by it, and I'm just trying to, because none of us, none of those people are in this chat right now, where they're like, they're swearing by it. I wish there was somebody here that, that was like, I live and die by this perk, because I want to understand the mindset that it really pushes. Usually there's an, uh, there's a extra argument to be had based on that. The other thing too, I want to get out there is when I do a lone wolf run, I always give Pathfinder to my lone wolf. Uh, 100% because there's so many scenarios to get away from the enemy or you need as much fatigue as you can to take on those battles Granted you have recovery, but in a swamp 
that is you're pretty much like a kryptonite for a lone wolf type of build uh, another one too my fencer like if i use a fencer for instance it's great for fencers because you need as much fatigue as you can to keep wrapping the lines and, and uh, attacking priority targets. It works out great. It has, at least for me. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of interesting builds or, or even meta builds like the Lone Wolf where it's just incredible. So I got to I gotta give a little bit of a testament to that. But no doubt in my mind, if you guys do a zero stand build, do not make that build without Pathfinder. You're gonna be, you're gonna be so disappointed when you get into a rough terrain just in general it is it is literally damning to that build if you don't have it anybody else any other thoughts you guys want to throw in or scenarios builds anything um I don't, the the whole pathfinder team sounds like i don't really understand what that i don't really know what that's supposed to actually net you like you are like cool you can move more but um that would have to. I think that could actually work best with a cultist run, where you use adrenaline, because what like moving around doesn't really get you that much, to be honest. Like you're more flexible, but um, like, like either, enemies come to you like that. I I that, I'm I'm just I'm trying to work out how this works. But enemies come to you, so then, like you because know, they act first or whatever. So then the ability to run faster doesn't net you a lot in a lot of situations because like if you're i'm thinking of goblins they act first so then they root you um orcs you let them you don't run into orcs you let orcs run into you and then the or they'll like they'll charge stun you um you, you have the indom to stop that for brigands um brigands just they, they literally just run into you for nobles they uh shield wall and noble fights are just like so it's like a wall so the ability to move forward um doesn't really net you like anything because if you just run into a wall and noble fights are always on flat terrain barbarians um you have to deal with i'm thinking the big ones with the unholds you you can't move from the unholds that you have to in my experience you have to indom in front of the in front of the unhold so they can't kill you so then you're not moving and then, then in um Ancient Undead, you move back two tiles, and then they run into you, and then you kill them. So you're not moving. So there's just, like, there's not many scenarios where that seems, like, doable. Or viable, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I'm going to say to, to add, or to, either to add or to take from it, is that I think most people wouldn't, wouldn't look at it in that light as the freedom of movement really far, as much as it is for the, the saving of fatigue. Like... As much as I want this whole discussion is to give people a different perspective, at least on this. And I know I'm just going to use, I didn't want to use this guy as reference to it, but one of the things that Filthy Robot brought up was the reason that he advocates tenfolds over than he did before was because of the fatigue saving things. It, it, he says that it's, his words is that it was, it's better to use that perk then it's more viable than than recovery to him now because of the fact that he can get in position where he wants to be or scenario situ situational fights where he keeps all of, or he keeps such a great deal of fatigue and can usually make the movements and get more fatigue back the next the next round because he didn't blow over 15 fatigue i think just to just to clarify i think that that's where people are coming from more when they do look at pathfinder but Again, if we're just talking about being able the freedom of movement to go even farther in a scenario against certain enemies, uh, yeah, I I completely agree. But yeah, a lot of things do come to you. The only thing I'd say is like when you're facing archers or you're facing goblins. Goblins, they some of the skirmishers will run up, but the ultimate deal is a lot of those uh, the ambushers will stay far back. Shamans will stay far back to to chase them up terrain or chase them across the battlefield makes it ten times less tedious uh, than it than it would be without Pathfinder. But again, that's that's just me trying to make a case for that side. I gotta, you know what I mean? I gotta fight for that other side of the community because I think we all agree otherwise about this perk. Yager, were you gonna say something? I seen your you you lit up there. No, you had said it. Oh, okay. Anybody else want to throw something out there? This is a great discussion, though. I think I think there's a lot of, like, humbleness to understanding. We all agree, again, at the end of it all, we all agree that this perk has a great uh, nature to it. It feels more like a luxury perk than it does a, 
a need type of perk, like a, a mid-max meta type of perk. Which is weird for me saying that, because I know that there's going to be people that feel that way. But it's, you know, for us, that's kind of where it lands. I think the average overall is going to be either, it, it's probably going to be a 3. Between the people that said 2 and the people that said 4, uh, we average at a 3 for this one. So, very interesting. Very interesting discussion. Uh, last chance to say something, otherwise we'll call it. Um, I think yeah, I'm gonna try to put Pathfinder on my um, pole arms now, I think. Because uh, I, I, I am having problems with uh, them moving and not being able to attack, so I mm. will try that. What? Uh, my... I I... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was say my pole arm bros, um, generally they use a lot of stam. Through a combination of Berserk, they, um, in the crossbow, like loading crossbow takes a lot of stam. Attacking twice takes a lot of stam. So the Pathfinder is really helpful with um, not building up as much. Is there anybody in here that... Uh, this is one of the things I was going to ask earlier. I actually had it in my notes here, and I totally forgot. But is there anybody here who who dedicates, like, at least in a run or two, where they dedicate a bro to a two-handed cleaver or any any weapon that is two-hander that, that you can move two tiles and attack? Does anybody dedicate, usually in a run, that type of bro? Yes, I, mean, I started... To do that after like my first really successful company where I had like a cleaver, a 20 cleaver, he was really good. So oh. I've been trying to integrate that in my other playthroughs. Okay. Um, I, I yep. consider the two handed cleaver basically interchangeable with the cleaver duelist. I use them about the same, I change up a little like one or two perks. About the okay. Do you use, so like, yeah, a lot of times people, we've talked about this carp, that we use, you know, whip and cleaver with the mastery and it works phenomenal, right? You'd agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so here's, anybody else, Forant, Redemption, or Yager, do you guys ever use those, dedicate a brother to that type of build, like a two-strike two-hander? Strike two-hander, uh, not particularly, but... Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, uh, it's, I use them, but I not like... All right, for late game, I'm going to for sure have this character. It's kind of more like if I come across a weapon that I want to build a character with, yeah. then I'll do it. Uh, mm -hmm. I typically have past few runs have like a, a two-handed cleaver that I will use. I think like the Madman or whatever, the Barbarian Madman yeah. is usually yeah. like the, usually the spawn of that idea. But otherwise, yeah, I don't go into it thinking. I'm gonna have a dedicated brother for this okay. until I get the item. Yeah, unless I get like a pretty decent famed weapon, then I'm not huh. really thinking about making one. Okay, Yager, what do you How do you, do you bring this up? Well, I'll get. Oh. Well, let me just. Yager was gonna yeah, say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. First. No, I, I was just going to say I've I've never made this two-handed double. I don't usually like focus on a weapon until I know what they're going to be using. And even then, it's usually one of the last. If it if it's if it's a weapon mastery, it's going to be if not the last, then second to last um, that I that I start doing that. I, it's it's just something that I like to put off. Now, the, okay. So with that being said, this is the reason I bring it up is because when one thing that I advocate heavily for, and I don't know, I didn't really talk about it a lot. I brought it up for like two seconds and then continued my thought. But I think that Pathfinder is is gold with those builds. And the reason is because a lot of times in those in in really rough terrain, uh, taking a step and take or taking two steps is just not it's not possible to use your ability to cut to get the the most efficiency out of your cut without blowing a bunch of fatigue. So if you're if you're going two spaces and using uh, decapitate, like guys, that is that is so damning to your fatigue. And a lot of times you can get the best out of it. Same thing with switching out with disarm or using disarm if you have a whip. Uh, if you're moving two tiles, you have quick hands. A lot of times people use quick hands to pull out the whip. You are pretty much, you're, you're at a disadvantage in that way. And I know I've used, like I said, I've used both sides of the coin here where I didn't have it and did have, and I can tell you right now, works freaking wonders for those that particular build with the cleavers of the two you know the two strike abilities and i think that if somebody does make a dedicated build a lot of time they're, they're waiting to see what they get from the mad barbarian because that weapon either can be great or it can be terrible or now they have the new uh the two-handed scimitar in the south that weapon especially named is just 
you can get it where one strike is 80 to 100 damage and you can do two strikes with that and with decapitate the damage is ungodly i just want to throw that out there as another option for pathfinder i didn't explain earlier on so i just want to get you guys thought on that oh i mean that's that seems <laughs> yeah. true i wouldn't I'm, i mean i wouldn't treat it any differently than like regular duelists just sort of like the four ap attack um, mm -hmm. like the same thing in my mind yeah i feel like it's it's on par with the idea of i mean that specific build or that specific uh scenario is definitely on par with the the pole arms ability to take two steps because it's so fatigue intensive and it can be very i mean it can be very fatigue intensive with two-handed cleavers in general and uh getting that fatal blow that can change the tide of battle a lot of times on these terrains or going up to for instance going up terrain and not even going across tough terrain i'm just saying like go going up two sections of a steep and then taking a shot where you can't do that you can't do that otherwise with the two-handed cleaver so that scenario to me is so okay well, I think that'll do it then, guys. This was an awesome discussion. I'm excited to see what people say in the comments section. That'll be great. If you guys did like this, please hit the like, subscribe. More content like this is coming forward. If you'd like to be a part of the roundtable, I want to get this out there now. Uh, we have a core of guys that'll be doing this. And then if there's somebody who can't make it, if there's a, if there's a perk that you'd like to sit in on and be a part of this, uh, let me know ahead of time. We're, it's a steady process. It's going to take a long time to get through all these perks but uh we definitely keep you in mind and uh you know figure out what we can do so uh yeah so stay tuned for that otherwise guys i will see you in the next one bye